Hello everybody, this is Pun the Frugal Streamer, and I wanted to discuss four ways that you can increase your performance in Streamlabs OBS. A lot of people struggle with CPU usage, and there are things built into the software that can decrease your CPU load outside of streaming and recording settings itself, but stuff built right into the program that reduces the amount of load before you start streaming or recording. So there's some things I want to do, and one of them is a little out of the box, but I want to share that as your number one thing to do. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so the first thing that we can do to reduce CPU usage is by using another way of building your overlays. Uh, so media files, these packages that you could buy from Nerd or Die, VBI, uh, they're, they use media files, uh, movies, right, to loop and give you an animated effect. They use a lot of CPU in the process, uh, having to decode the frames, having to pull the information from your hard drive. Uh, it just uses a lot of resources. Uh, and it's really unnecessary now that another stream service outside of Streamlabs offers an ability to build an overlay on their website and then simply going in and using a browser source as a single source for your whole overlay. So stream elements, okay, if you watched my previous video talking about OBS Live, stream elements gives you an overlay builder where you can upload media files to their site, much like you would do with uh, files for your alerts in Streamlabs, uh, you can over you can do all these media files and you can build your overlays inside of Stream Elements. They give you a UI that you can manipulate your different portions of your overlays. You can do them as layers, okay? So you can have more than one there, and then it does all the processing there. And it's just a matter of you doing one browser source as a source for that scene, which reduces drastically the amount of CPU usage. Uh, I'm talking 50% reduction in CPU usage just by doing a browser source instead of doing all these separate sources as media files. So it's really important that you do this. I mean, if you're struggling with performance, this is the best number one way to reduce the amount of usage on Streamlabs OBS for your CPU. Okay, so the second way that you can reduce CPU usage if you do not use the first method that I discussed. If you are loyal to Streamlabs, you don't feel like making an account on Stream Elements, then you can use the second way of reducing CPU. And this is called Media File Caching. This is a recent update in Streamlabs OBS that is inside of the advanced menu. It's all the way down at the bottom if you scroll down, and it's simply checking Media File Caching. Now, by default, it should be checked, uh, but check just to make sure that it is and if you're using these media files, what it will do is it will take and decode the frames and then store that frame on your system RAM. And then instead of having to decode those frames over again, any of these frames that are just repeated, it's just going to pull from system RAM. Now, the downfall of that is it uses up a significant portion of your RAM. Uh, in addition to what Windows and any other program that's running in the background is already using. So that's something you need to keep in mind, is if you have a streaming PC with a minimal amount of RAM, this may not work well for you because it may actually hurt your performance. So make sure that you have an adequate amount of RAM. Now, I would say my streaming PC, I use 12 gigabyte of RAM in it, and with Windows running and OBS uh, or Studio or Streamlabs OBS running, and Spotify for music, and then I have the media file caching running. It uses about uh, eight and a half, nine gig of RAM. So it leaves me with about three gigabyte to spare. So that's why I say if you're running a system that's running off of eight gigabyte, it's probably not a good idea. But anyway, it does reduce CPU pretty significantly. I would say probably around 10% to 20% CPU usage. So. That is the second and probably the second best way to reduce the amount of CPU usage inside of Streamlabs OBS. The third way that you can reduce CPU usage in Streamlabs OBS 
is by doing something, and this actually applies to OBS Studio also. So if you're running a bunch of scenes with a bunch of sources in each scene and they consist of media files and anything that's going to use up CPU, you can actually check and inactivate these scene, these scenes and sort of these sources, I should say, when they're not active. So when they're inactive, they will turn themselves off. So, and many of you may not know that, but if you have media files and you don't have this checked in your source list for the properties for that source, it will continue to run in the background and it eats up CPU when you don't need it to. So have that checked to inactivate it and make sure um, you know you do that for each source and you will find that it actually reduces the amount of CPU usage that you use with Streamlabs OBS. Mm -hmm. Number four, and probably what I would consider to be a last resort, is a built-in function of Streamlabs OBS that is called performance mode. So th the downfall to using performance mode is that it's going to take away your preview uh, and it's going to take away any audio monitoring. So your mixer is going to blank out and you won't be able to check your audio levels and ensure that your microphone, for instance, isn't clipping, hitting the red, or your music or anything like that, it's too loud. Uh, so it's easy to do, simply go and click in your preview, right click in it, and in the ops, the menu options there, it will say performance mode. And when you click on that, um, it will, you know, you'll see your preview go away, you'll see your audio meters on your mixer go to gray, and then um, that will reduce your CPU, but, and then again, you don't get to see your preview. You don't get to see, make sure your scenes or your sources are working. Uh, you don't get to make sure you don't get to do audio monitoring uh, like you would under normal mode. So just keep that in mind. And that's why I consider it to be a last resort because I actually prefer to have my audio mixer to where I can monitor my audio levels visually. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial with Streamlabs OBS. I know there's a lot of people that complain a lot about CPU usage in Streamlabs OBS, so I felt that this video may be able to help you guys out with it. Uh, there are ways that you can re significantly reduce your CPU load so that when you're streaming, you have a little bit of overhead to work with, and that's kind of the goal of this video. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Make sure to listen. If you want to learn more about Streamlabs OBS, OBS Studio, OBS Live, uh, Voice Meter, any of these free streaming products that are out there, that are available for use. Please don't hesitate. Please subscribe to this channel because this is what this channel is all about. It's about teaching you how to stream for as cheap as possible, showing you great equipment, uh, free software, things that can enhance your live stream without you spending a ton of money. So if you enjoy that, then please subscribe, hit the notifications. You'll know when I go live post, and publish a video. Otherwise, I'd love to see you come back. So thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it helped you out. If it did, hit the like. Comment below if you know of any other uh, tricks or any methods that you can uh, use outside of stream settings themselves and record settings to increase the performance of Streamlabs OBS. Feel free to comment below. I would appreciate it. This is Pun Frugal Streamer. Be safe. Be frugal.